Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and today we're making some gazpacho. Um, so we're making Andalusian gazpacho. There's there's many different types of gazpacho, but this is the sort of the classic, you know, it's tomato soup served ice cold, as Lisa Simpson says. Um, but actually, it's not really tomato soup. Classic Andalusian gazpacho is made with, it's more of a bread and olive oil soup that's flavored with tomatoes. Um, you know, the history of it is not completely clear, but... It seems it seems that originally the soup was uh, was a Roman soup made with um, bread, garlic, olive oil, um, and salt. Uh, and well, the the sort of apocryphal story is that um, horse people would keep bread in their saddlebags and their bread and garlic and olive oil in the saddlebags on their horses, and the the movement of the horse and the warmth of their bodies would kind of mash it down into an emulsion, and then they would eat that for lunch, which. I don't know, horse, horse sweat soup doesn't sound great to me. But what we're doing is we're starting with uh, about six ounces of, of good quality bread. Um, so this is sourdough bread from my friends at Bachhaus Bakery. Um, I'm cutting off the crust because they don't blend very well. Um, and then, well, we'll get to the other ingredients when we, when we get to them. <clears throat> so then after that, we got our... Oh, by the way, th this, is a, this is a basically a no... The, the only thing we're going to get dirty is a cutting board and a blender, um, nothing else. You know, I, I have a couple recipes for this. One is a little more complicated than the other. Um, one of them involves salting all the vegetables overnight to draw out their flavor. Um, but this quick version is almost as good, and it's, you know, it, it's lunch in like 10, 15 minutes, or even less, depending on how good your knife skills are. Um, all right, so we're going to peel a cucumber now. Peel and seed it because the seeds are very watery and kind of end up diluting flavor. So we'll split it in half. Get a spoon out. And then you can just scrape the seeds right out. If you have something like a, you know, if you're using like Persian cucumbers or Japanese cucumbers, you don't really need to do this because the seeds are, are pretty dense. Um, English cucumbers also, you probably wouldn't do this because the seed, well, English cucumbers, I've, actually, I wouldn't really recommend for this recipe, period, because they tend to be quite a bit more watery than uh, these standard American cucumbers. I'm going to keep one little chunk of that for garnish. The rest of this will go into here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, each time I add a vegetable, I'm gonna salt it a little bit. And that salt is gonna help draw out liquid. And what's going to happen is that liquid is going to then soak down into the bread, which is going to make it easier to emulsify down the line. Um, tomatoes, just take out the cores. Um, these are a couple of regular old beefsteak tomatoes and then a couple of purple Cherokees that my neighbor grew in her yard. Thanks, Elena. Actually, two of them are from her yard and one of them is from my yard. But thank you, Alana. She dropped them off on our doorstep the other day. <clears throat> um, tomatoes were not added to gazpacho until, well, until, I, the, you know, the, the soup, gazpacho, the, the, the bread version is quite old, but um, tomatoes weren't added, added to it until after the, well, after, after tomatoes were brought to um, Europe from the New World, so. I think it was, I believe it was in the, I believe the tomato version started becoming popular sometime in the 18th century, maybe 19th century, I can't remember. Someone, someone will, sh will let me know, I'm sure. Um, the main difference between this gazpacho and a very similar soup called, um, a very similar dish called salmorejo, um, which, uh, well, some people might consider it a soup, some people might consider it a dip. Um, salmorejo is made with um, tomatoes, bread, olive oil, and garlic. Gazpacho can have other ingredients added to it as well. Um, so in the south, in Andalusia, it's typically bell peppers, onions. Ooh, this is a real ripe tomato. This is, by the way, this is a good thing to make when your tomatoes are starting to kind of get a little overripe because it doesn't matter how mushy they are. Um, in the uh, south of Spain, it's made um, <clears throat> with these vegetables, um, cucumber, peppers, onions, and tomato. Um, other parts of Spain, you might see other vegetables added to it, or you might see things like um, pimenton, like smoked paprika added to it. Um, this version is quite, you know, it's mainly vegetable forward, vegetable friendly, vegetable, vegetable focused. All right, that's gonna, that's gonna be part of our garnish later. Let me get a little bowl for that. All right, now we got a bell pepper. Um, this is how I like to do my bell peppers. I think I've showed this on another video. I just kind of hold it up and I 
fillet it. And the idea is you want to try and cut around these white um, ribs inside. And you end up with this, which is discardable. I'm just gonna, oops, I'm gonna salt those tomatoes. Very roughly chop these peppers. Everything can be a super rough chop, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, in a very traditional um, uh, gazpacho, you would make this in a mortar and pestle. Um, so you'd just kind of smash up garlic um, with salt. I'm gonna throw a couple garlic cloves in there also. Three cloves of garlic. Um, with salt and, and uh, bread into a sort of smooth emulsion. Uh, and then you would start, start adding your other, other ingredients, your tomatoes and your onions and peppers, and kind of smash them all up. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there are different schools of thoughts on whether gazpacho should be a smooth emulsion or whether it should be kind of more a, a chunky puree. Um, I personally prefer the smooth emulsion generally, but, you know, do it. You can make it as smooth or as chunky as you like. What's up? Oh, sorry. Um... <clears throat> And, you know, if you don't have a very, I have, I have this Vitamix, which is a very sort of high-powered blender. If you don't have that, it's going to be pretty difficult to get a super smooth emulsion. Um, but that's okay. It's going to be just as, just as good um, as a, as a uh, rough puree anyway. All right, so that's basically it. i got to take out this compost at some point. Now, the only other ingredients are sherry vinegar and good olive oil. And I forgot to keep the rest of those other vegetables for garnish, but that's all right. We'll garnish with just cucumber today. Um, so ideally, you know what I'm gonna do? Um, so what you want to do, what you wanna see is this bread kind of soaked in liquid, um, which is what's gonna happen as this sits and um, moisture gets pulled out from these vegetables. So I'm gonna put this here, and uh, now through the magic of, now through the magic of turning off the camera and turning it back on again 15 minutes later, it is ready to go. Now, I'm gonna add some olive oil. There's a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Even a little bit more, maybe. We'll, add, we'll be adding more um, down the line. About two tablespoons of sherry vinegar. You can use red wine vinegar if you want, but I like the flavor of sherry vinegar. Um, and now I'm gonna cover up this blender. Now when you start a blender, you always wanna start it at the lowest possible setting um, because if you start it too fast, it all explodes and everything ends up on the ceiling. So start low and slowly turn it up. There you go. And so you see all the liquid that was exuded. I didn't add any liquid to this at all. This is all just straight from the vegetables, um, other than the two tablespoons of sherry vinegar. And that all kind of soaks into the bread. And it helps you make a real nice smooth puree. Now, as it goes, I'm going to be adding a little bit more olive oil. So I'll probably end up adding about a half cup of olive oil total. And you want to use your really good extra virgin stuff here. You got a spoon to taste. Mm. That's delicious. <laughs> Alright, I don't know how much you could hear me when that was going on. Um, what I was saying that is that I ended up adding about a half cup or so of olive oil total. And you want to use your really good extra virgin stuff. Um, this is from California Olive Ranch, um, which I enjoy. Um, and there you go. That is gazpacho. Um, at least a form of gazpacho. There are many forms of gazpacho, but this is one of my favorite ways to make it. Mm. It is really good. Um, I made quite a bit here. I'll probably give, end up giving away some of this to my neighbors. Um, but yeah, sweet, vinegary, olive oil. That olive oil gives it some nice... Um, astringency. Um, you know, people have asked me about putting olive oil in a blender um, because in the past I've written how you never want to put olive oil um, in a blender if you're making um, an aioli or mayonnaise um, because extra virgin olive oil has polyphenols that can oxidize um, very easily when uh, the blender sort of rapidly introduces oxygen to the, to the mix. Um, and so I've done tests on this, um, double blind tests with dozens and dozens of participants um, and it definitely makes a notable difference. If you have an olive oil that is even slightly um, astringent or bitter to begin with, or, or hot, which a lot of good olive oils are, um, those flavors sort of get 
amplified when you try and make when you try and blend the olive oil into something like an aioli or mayonnaise and you end up with something that's extremely bitter and hot and difficult to eat um I'm, i know other people who've had the same experience uh, making um sort of almost inedible uh aiolis however with something like this um a puree where there's a lot of other stuff getting in the way um and a relatively low concentration of olive oil um you don't get that same effect so something like a pesto or a chimichurri or a um, a pureed soup like this, a gazpacho, um, or any kind of puree where you have a lot of sort of matter um, and olive oil, you don't really get that same effect. Um, so you don't really have to worry about it too much. Here's how I would serve this. So I'm going to put it in a bowl. Um, and then I got over here, I got some chopped up peppers, cucumber, and actually these are just little cherry tomatoes. Um, but you know, you can, you can dice up a regular tomato. But basically the, the same ingredients that went into the soup I'm going to use to garnish. Um, and by the way, you can, if you want, you can do herbs here. So, you, so something like oregano would be great. Um, chives would be great. Um, but you don't have to. Parsley is good. Even basil is good or cilantro. Any, any, any herb you want, really. Um, so we got a little garnish there. And then a little drizzle of olive oil. And some very coarsely ground black pepper for a little bit of heat. And look at that. I'm gonna go over to the window to eat this. Now this is one case where I won't feed it to the dogs because A, they don't they don't love all these peppers. Um, but B, this has a pretty high proportion of onion. Um, so I, I don't want to feed something with this high concentration of onion to the dogs. Yeah, sorry Shapo, you heard that, right? Hmm, that is refreshing. Summer in a bowl. All right, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, gazpacho, and I will see you later. Oh, sorry, as they say in Spain, I will see you later.